Hey guys, John Wootie here, and this morning I had an experience that um, really kind of hit me in the feels. Couldn't help it. I got to the gym, 6 a.m., and the first thing I saw was a homeless man sleeping on the bench right out front the front doors of my gym. And this is particularly upsetting, not just because it's now winter here in Owen Sound, and so I, you know, it's a pretty dreadful sleep for anyone to have being on that park bench at this time of year. But this comes off the heels at the time that Owen Sound has just announced that the city is in for another property tax hike in 2022. This could not be more ironic. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. I've already made one video. I'm going to put it in the show notes and also link it directly inside of this video in which I talk about how uh, a huge portion of Owen Sound's population already teeters on the poverty line. Like the vast majority of our population is just not well off. That's already a huge problem right there. And the average household income is the lowest in Ontario. It's sad, but it's true. And homeowners here, despite that fact, uh, pay the hugest portion of their paychecks towards property taxes. And yet to think that despite all this, city council even acknowledges the problem that we have. Uh, Ian Boddy stated, we need to be more aggressive to consistently attract new investment and grow our tax base. I can tell you law number one of chasing investors, they don't like spending money on taxes. So you are completely going in the wrong direction. And you know what? Here's Councillor John Tamming. What he had to say is, we are virtually one of the poorest cities by income in Ontario, and we have virtually the highest percentage of income being paid on property taxes. And despite this acknowledgement by both the mayor and one of his councillors, they're still going ahead and hiking property taxes up again. What's even more obscene is the fact that when I first came to the Owen Sound area, I, my, our parents moved us over to Meaford, which is close by to Owen Sound. That was like back in 1987. And even dating before 1987, Owen Sound's population always hovered around the 21,000 mark. Today, we're at 22,000. But that's only probably because that 21,000 all the way back then was already at like 21,600. They just didn't put it that way. So our population here has been stagnating for over three decades, and yet they keep hiking taxes. You look at Saugeen Shores, just 20 minutes down the highway from here, between 2016 and 2021, their population has exploded by 12%. And you look at Owen Sound in Collingwood. When I was a kid, Collingwood was dwarfed by Owen Sound. It had more than Meaford had to offer, and so did Owen Sound, but since 2017, Collingwood has completely pole vaulted right over Owen Sound. In 2017, Collingwood had a population of 17.5 thousand people. Today, it stands at 22,000 and continues to grow. 2022, it'll be like, it will have officially surpassed. Everything about Collingwood and what it has to offer its people is superior. So then, what is the problem with all the politicians, and this dates before like the present city council. They're not entirely responsible for this mess. This goes back quite a ways. So why is it that we just keep on hiking taxes? We recognize that there's too much poverty. We recognize there's no population growth. We recognize not enough businesses are moving up here, and yet we keep hiking up the goddamn taxes. So, oh, pardon me. <laughs> Perhaps I'm getting a little overzealous. This is all to say, this is an endless cycle. And it's proven by the fact that nothing has changed in over three decades. So in 2022, I would like for you guys to, remind, to remember this. If you live here, all right, there is a vote coming up in 2022. If you know people who are passionate about changing everything that's wrong with this place, and there's a lot wrong, despite the fact that Owen Sound is a beautiful place, great place to live, there is a lot wrong. In fact, it was just a couple of days ago, we had a massive drug bust. And yet, how many people do you hear on social media saying, oh, so doesn't have a drug problem? Bullshit. I think it was like 60 kilos of cocaine were seized in this raid. You're gonna tell me there's not a drug problem? Look, we need to corral people who are passionate about making changes, people who you think would be a good fit in City Hall in 2022. Start talking to them. 
I personally would never want to run for office. It's just not my thing. But I will reach out to people who I think are great, upstanding community members who want to see change. But this is ridiculous. We can't keep having this. We can't keep having the old money. And this is what it is. It's all a case of the old money. All right, all the people you see sitting on city council right now, they don't have the challenges that the people you see standing in front of Safe and Sound over on 8th Street East are facing. They don't know what it's like. They have no idea. That's why they've associated a budget to fix the pickleball courts in Harrison Park. Pickleball. And I think, I, I think they committed something like 150000 to pickleball. Like, that's obscene. And yet you look at all the other problems that we have to be looking at solving, and that's what they commit the money to? So that's my plea to you today. If you know people that you know will make a difference, if we can get elected into office, let's start making a coordinated effort. Let's get the old money out. If you look at Shelburne, Ontario, and I will make a separate video on this. Shelburne, Ontario used to be dominated by old money, a whole bunch of corrupt old hicks. And these guys did everything to keep Shelburne as old and as classic as it was. And as a result, their downtown was falling apart. It was turning into a slum. The place was a shithole. All right, I will come out right out and say it. Shelburne used to be a shithole. And then, magically, after one good election, new blood came in. This new blood got to work right away. Now you look at Shelburne's downtown. I drove by there um, three weeks ago. That was the last time I drove through downtown Shelburne. You're seeing boutiques, all sorts of like new boutiques, uh, pubs, restaurants. The place is coming to life again. You look at Owen Sound's downtown, it's starting to come around but not in the way that Shelburne's is starting to come around. And furthermore, you're starting to see new buildings coming up, new subdivisions. There, there's so much development going on in Shelburne, and all it took was a changing of the guard, and that's what we need here in Owen Sound. We can't keep repeating the same problem on over and over again. We can't have people sleeping out front of a bench, out front of the gym, just because our city council is so inept that they see the problems right in front of them, but they refuse to do anything concrete about it. If you've... If you feel like you agree with this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I really encourage you to do so. Thank you for watching.